All right, hi guys, thank you, welcome. My name is Adam and I'll be taking us through this session today, which is first impressions, all right? Which is obviously really important. People have paid a lot of money for these tours. They're wondering if they've chosen the right tour company, should they have chosen the other one? And we can allay all those fears by our first impression. So we'll be going over, it's pretty simple, what, what we like in a first impression from a tour guide and that's what we should do, you know? So we'll be going over that. We're also going to be going over some safety stuff that we have to talk about. This is like if we were doing, say, a Cape Tribulation tour or something like that, where we're going to do the whole day. And then we'll be having a go, getting in pairs and having a chat with each other and trying to make sure we remember these safety items that we've learnt today. Um, so just before we start, guys, if we don't mind having our phones on silent, that would be awesome. You've got some scrap paper there and pens to use. And just in case anything goes horribly wrong, uh, we're gonna head down the stairs and out the front. It's kind of a little bit of a tight, small room, so just be careful when you're moving around not to bump over the camera or anything like that. And obviously we'll stay away from all the electricity and the cords up here. All right, so as I say, leading tour groups, how to make a first impression. And the first one I've put here is a nice, clean bus. <laughs> we weren't so lucky with this uh, to a company that we got our buses washed for us all the time like we do here at Tropic Wings. <laughs> all right, so let's go for it. You are getting picked up for a tour. You know, what are you gonna like to happen? Let's, let's start with the first one. Do you want the tour guide to be on time? Let's yes, start with that. You need to be on time. 100%. On time is a very important one. Now let's just say that you are running late and you pull up, do you think we should just ignore the fact that we're running late or acknowledge it to the person that we're running late? Yeah, yes. Acknowledge and give them a reason. Exactly, mate. And obviously we run late all the time, this happens. And every single time, I'm so sorry I ran late, you know, whatever reason, traffic, or I got held up at one of the other stops or whatever, I've never had a person complain. They've always gone, oh, that's all right. They just want it acknowledged, you know. Well, if you do know you're stuck behind in pickups, give them a courtesy call. Perfect. Well, that's it. Obviously, here we've got the reservations office. We can call them anytime. I'm running late. They call ahead to the passengers. Then the pass because you know what it's like, especially when they see other Tropic Swing buses going past them. Even we've got buses yeah. everywhere, and they're like, "Oh my God, that was my bus!" And they're it's, yeah. it's five minutes late, and it's panic time, you know. So that's a really important one. And let's put it on the other side of things. Let's say you're a passenger and you're the one who's running late. You've got a kid, they've needed to do a last minute toilet stop or something before they get on the bus or their breakfast was running late or whatever and they're coming out late. You know, how do you want to be spoken to? Do you want the tour guide to be like, you're all right, no, no. Do you want that to be our first impression or do you want to be forgiven, you're on holidays and let's just make sure we're on time the rest of the day, no problem, you know? So what do you think you prefer? <laughs> and, uh, a little bit of a bit of compassion, that's a great one, great word. And I have seen it, you know, I've been out watching our tours getting picked up and I've seen people, their first impression is, you're late, you know, sort of thing. And I'm like, oh, mortified, but it does happen. All right, so we're going good so far. Obviously the old adage is you only get one chance at a first impression and we're going really good so far. All right, so when the bus pulls up, what do you think you would prefer? Do you think you would prefer the guide to stay in the seat of the bus, press the door of the button and you jump on, or would you like it if the guide got out of the bus and walked out and greeted you one-on-one? -on -one? What would you prefer there? I like to be greeted, and I like to try as a driver. I like to get off the bus and say, welcome, jump on board, pop your seat belt on, whatever. Uh, more often than not though, People are keen, you know, you pull up, you open the door and they're poof, yes. <laughs> <That'll beat you. laughs> and that's it, it's exactly right mate, and I'll, I'll generally, I'll go, oh guys, I love your enthusiasm, just hop off for a second while I mark you guys off. The thing I think, just personally for me, um, that's worked out really well for me in the past is getting everyone's names, if, especially if they're in a group, and I'll have that little sheet next to me as I'm driving along in case um, I need to glance at it. And the other thing I've found really good um, is getting the nationality where they're from because then we have the chance to go, oh, Jane, you're from England. John's from England as well. 
you know, as they're getting on the bus, already they're gonna go, oh, where are you from? In England, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, cool, they've met each other. Already you're getting that interaction kind of happening, you know? And the other thing is I've found, um, especially with the Cape Tribulation tours, as you know, Rob, um, it's really possible to weave their countries into your stories and make it much more interesting for them. You know, it's, you, it's amazing how many different countries are involved in Australia, getting in Australia's history. So yes, Steve, that is perfect, thank you. Now, what about uh, on that note, when I'm saying I write their name down, do you care if the guide remembers your name or is it awesome if they do? Awesome. Yes, yeah. I 100% agree. It's a really difficult thing to do. Um, as I say, that's why I have my little cheat sheet with me. And I know people who've even gone to the lengths of writing Jane Red Top or something like that. Some people even have a little... <laughs> what, buses, what buses are you driving, Linda? This sounds like a fun tour. <laughs> so um, some people even go to the lengths of drawing a little map of the bus and going, that's where Jane, who sits in what seat and writing the names, you know, so... Pe yes, I've seen that happen. Um, people love hearing their own names. Yes, they do. Yeah. They're yeah. talking about themselves too, but um, <laughs> yeah, they do. Um, and, and so we need to listen, but, um, but you couldn't, like, just for a, a pick-up drop-off, you wouldn't... We're talking about full-day yeah. tours. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, long tours, yes, otherwise you just got to at least be courteous. Like, okay, hey, mate, so sorry, I've forgotten your name, or... Totally. Yeah, 100%. And um, what you say is right. Yeah, we're obviously we're chatting more about the full day tours today. But you bring up a great point, Linda. You know, I've seen so many times as well, let's say, for example, someone will go to the tour guide. Oh, yeah, I was out snorkeling yesterday and I saw a turtle. And I see the tour guide going, oh, yeah, I was out there last week and I saw 10. You know, and I'm like, whatever this the correct answer to that is wow you are so lucky that's so amazing tell me about it <laughs> you know so i've seen so many tour guides that need to one up their passengers and people, as you say linda they just want to talk about themselves and be heard so that's a really great point now this is an easy one when we're jumping off the bus what do you all you're getting greeted by tour guides do you want them to be welcoming or do you want them to be grumpy you know so <laughs> They could have, their dog could have died yesterday. They could be having horrible problems at work. They're running late. Maybe their bus had a problem this morning. <sighs> Game faces on, you know. As uh, we always say, we're, on, we're the duck on the water. Up the top, we're cool as a cucumber. Underneath, the legs are going like crazy. So that's an easy one. Now, we're driving between pickups, let's say. Um, do you want the guide to be kind of having small talk, maybe letting you know, oh, you know, we've still got a few more pickups, I'll tell you about the day then, or do you just want silence? What is kind of... Oh, a bit of communication. A bit of communication, all right. I agree with that one. Um, now, let's get to kids. Sometimes we've got to take kids on tour. Um, some of you guys have kids, some, some don't. But what would you like the tour guide to do? Would you like them to make an effort with your kids and make them feel special or just like, oh, annoying kids? <laughs> make them feel special because then, um, it, I think you're going to get less problems down the track if you make them feel special. Yeah, 100% mate. Parents love you for this one. Like getting down to their level. Hey, what's your name, buddy? And I keep stickers in my bag. Oh, like you would be the ultimate. Come out and I'm like, I'm sticking out of all the stickers. Now, Snickers. No, no, Snickers. I have a roll of stickers. Did you? Yeah, or a stamp top of the wings or something. Give them the, yeah, get a whole lot of stickers with butterflies. Oh my God, this is an amazing idea. Mm. There you go, we're getting ideas off each other. I have, yeah, I have a whole lot of stickers and they got animals and they have sayings. <laughs> yeah. I think it's two way street with kids. And stuff. You, it, it's good <laughs> to make the kid feel comfortable with you. If you later in the door have to tell them something, you know, like, well, you can't go in there or, or whatever. Mm. Um, you're not intimidating if they're comfortable with it. But the two-way street is, you've got to let the parents know that they're still responsible for the actions of their child. Yes. You know, you're not a driver, babysitter, tour guide. Um, I hate when they go, oh, the bus driver will tell you off. But as soon as you do that, it's suddenly like, don't you speak to my child like that? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> yeah, I made a hundred percent statement. I've had that, you know, like I'm the type of guy who'll get the kid up the front and go, oh, mate, I'm gonna get need a bit of help with some stuff today. Do you reckon you can help me? You know, blah blah blah. And but yes, I have had that happen where the parents are like, oh sweet, I don't have to do anything today. So that's a really, really good point that you make. Sorry about the noise, folks. We are in a <laughs> in a workshop here. Well, once I was on a bus and there was a kid making a big noise and um, creating habits, I started singing the wheels on the bus around and then the whole bus started singing oh. the kids. It was good. My, my one is the kids being really good and I'm in the big bus and they, especially they're being interested in the driving and stuff, I go, oh, I'm having trouble opening my door. Yes, Would you like yes, to come help me? And you sit on the big seat yeah. and I look on their face. Oh, that's it. What kid doesn't love that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's all that time, and I've had parents take photos and stuff. <laughs> it's something that I would kill. Or another kids. one is like when I was doing route services, and um, you know they have a belt, and you get the kid to push the bell at the same time you open the door. I think I think I'll be doing that one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, is you're sitting on that tour, you've just been picked up once again, you're wondering if you picked the right tour, the right tour guide, how would you like them to be driving? Do you want them to be having like... The <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe don't answer that question then. Because <laughs> this is it, there's a fair chance maybe you are running late and that sort of stuff's going on, but let's be honest, it does not matter how good a tour guide you are, if they're not feeling safe and comfortable, you ain't gonna win them over. Yeah. So no matter how late you're running, no matter what's going on, obviously we need to drive safe and pretend like everything is no problem. And the last one I know which does happen these days when you've got someone like me calling you or reservations calling you is using the phone. So would you like that tour guide to be picking up their phone and talking on their phones? And there it is. This is the way I look at tour guide and it's as easy as that. I think what would I like yes. from, a, from someone picking me up? and we do that. So I don't think this game is too difficult. So let's go to um, our next slide. Uh, <laughs> what type of tour guide would we like? And- Are they the people you still have? Here they are. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't deny, and Ali will vouch for this, this is how I used to go around and pick up all my passengers. <laughs> of the morning, and yeah, how you going guys? <laughs> Just trying to make a bit of a first impression, break the ice, make them think, oh, this is gonna be a bit of a laugh. Some people believed they were my real teeth on many occasions, <laughs> and, they'll go, and they'd go, well, where's that other guy that was here before? Where's that guy who picked us up? Oh, I think it's a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly right. That so, like that's, uh, that, that's the one they're gonna show if I ever get busted by the police. <laughs> Yeah, when, the, when people are trying to tell him he was a good citizen. <laughs> All right, so the next one is yes, we need to give a talk uh, to the passengers before we go about safety stuff. Um, once again, do you think this talk is better as you're driving up the highway? Or do you think it's best if we stand in the stairwell of the bus and do a bit of a face-to-face -face, or turn around in your driver's seat, do a bit of a face-to-face? -face? Yeah. What's that? Mate, I cannot stress how important I think this is for you to stand there, for them to see your face and have a quick chat to them, no matter how late you're running. This really sets you up for the day, you know? Um, I think it's fine to talk about the itinerary as you're driving, because that's quite a long talk. Um, but as far as the safety stuff, the face-to-face -face I think is really important. Now that I've mentioned itineraries, Here's definitely one of my number one rules, and I've seen tour guides do this, do not mention any times no. about your itinerary in the day. And I've seen so many guides go, at 10.30 we'll be doing this, at 11 o'clock we'll be doing this, next thing you start running behind time, and everyone thinks oh, I'm missing out on stuff. Unless it's obviously like, say, Coranda, where it's a 3.30 train, you have yes. to be there and leave without you. Exactly right, if we've got a, 3.30 crocodile cruise or something, yes, they, we can give them actual time. The only thing they really want to know is what time am I going to be back tonight? 
because they want to organize their dinner, maybe their Tinder dates messaging them or something, you know. So that's the important one. But apart from that, I never ever mention uh, timings of the itinerary. All right, so let's have a little go. What things do you think that we need to mention for our safety speech? Seatbelts. Seat Love it. What else? Remain seated whilst the bus is Oh, yes. Remain. Sorry, I'm a lefty. It's very hard for me to ride on. Oh, you're a lefty. I don't right know. Right Remain seated. I love it. Are we talking about just for the bus or are we talking about, like, say, we're running a whole tour? This is just what we would say at the beginning of the day. It, it, there's no wrong answers. We can just go for it. What else are we thinking is important Probably, to us? Um, if there is um, an emergency or something that goes wrong. Emergency. Yes. Maybe where the emergency exits are or something like that. Yep. Yeah, sorry, the bus catch on fire. Buses catch on fire, yes. <laughs> Anything else? Someone's feeling sick. Sick? Yeah. I like it. Anything else? I think they might want to know. Oh, sick. Yeah, to follow your instructions if you ask to be on at certain times. Mm, I love that one. And um, on that note, so yes, on a Cape Tribulation day, we have a 3.30 crocodile cruise. So at the start of the day, I'm saying to them, I'm gonna ask you to be on the bus at certain times today. I'm not being annoying. If we run late, we'll miss our river cruise and our chance to see crocodiles in the wild. So all of a sudden, there's a reason why they have to be on time. So that's, a, if you can give them a reason, then it's much better. All right, we're going well. Anything else, guys? Lunch arrangements. Yes, dietary requirements. You nailed it, Steve. That's, I'm sure that's exactly what you were going to say. Yeah, they all love their food, don't they? No matter what, you see those people come off the cruise, you know, and they must be fed like crazy on those cruises, yeah. and they're still, where's our lunch? <laughs> <laughs> food or drinks like if you don't want to eat on the bus? Yes, eating on the bus. What's the dining options they got? Toilets, that's one they definitely want to know about. All right, love it. Good. All right, Coolio, that's covered most of the ones that I've put. Smoking. Smoking. Smoke break. No dirty smokers around here. Even vaping. Yeah. You know, where, the, where they can and can't work. True. Yeah, which is important. You know, there are rules around that these days. So yeah, all those things are absolutely perfect. Now, once again, we want to try and make this as lighthearted as we can. And one of the best ones I've ever heard, or possibly the best one I've ever heard for putting on your seatbelts came out of this man's mouth. <laughs> along the lines of I'm going to be telling some great jokes today so if you don't wear your seatbelts people have been known to fall in the aisle and roll around so <laughs> which is a great way it's not like just standing there going guys put on your seatbelts you know <laughs> it's the law a sort of thing time. yeah which don't get me wrong it does work but ideas like that and it's okay to share ideas because we're never going to have the same two passages. You know, if, if we're doing Cape Tribulation tours, they're not going to come and do it again and have another guide and hear that again. So it's okay to share ideas like that. And that is one of the best I've ever heard. Uh, also, also do, like, so you don't fall out your seat when they go around the corners. Yes, <laughs> because that's the way you're going to be driving, Linda. Yes. And then I said, oh, you know, it could be about $600 and we have to share it. So I'm sure you've got a better way to spend that on holidays. Yes, 100% course, right. Like, you know, if you get a fine, you say, oh, we have to pass it on to you. It's $600. I'm sure you've got a better way to spend that on holidays. So they remember, you know, they think, oh, that's a lot of money. I'd rather, you know, spend on my holiday than a fine. <laughs> I just tell people they haven't seen me drive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if oh, it's if it's definitely yeah. Yeah. yeah, if it's going to affect them, if they think they're going to get fined, yes, definitely they'll do that. Um, so seatbelts, emergency exits, yes, that's one I've got on my list. Food and drink, um, it's on my list. Uh, they want to know if they can fill up their water bottles, um, if we have water with us, which we do take on our Cape Tribulation tours. Um, another one is the air conditioning, just. No one will ever tell you if it's too cold or too hot, yeah. but let them know that it's okay <laughs> to tell you if it's too cold they or too hot. They tell you. Occasionally, <laughs> you know, when you turn the bus off, the air conditioning goes off. And yes. It doesn't come back on a little bit. 
a couple of times I forgot to click it back on and uh, I've had to can you turn on the bloody air conditioner? Yeah. <laughs> when you start seeing all the jackets come on, you're like, okay, it's a bit cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll watch them if they're poking at their air con vents and which way they're poking them and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, just so they know, they can talk to you. Um, all the things we spoke about, there's first aid kit on the bus in case you have an accident, the dietary requirements, that's a really important one uh, these days. Um, the toilets, yes, I always let them know. I know where every toilet is between here and Cape Tribulation but there's not many of them. Especially so, the they yes. let you know. Give us plenty of warming, warnings. I've got on my list here timings. Yes, let's stick to them um, so that our, our day runs smoothly. And the only other ones I've got here, I always tell them um, that I'm also their personal photographer. I know it's difficult for them to get in photos together, mm -hmm. so you should ask me. And the last one I tell them is questions. Please ask me questions. I tell them my day is gonna be more exciting if you ask me questions than me just sitting here talking about the same stuff I normally talk about. I always you know? joke, I say, if I don't know, Dr. Google knows the answer. <laughs> and I'll be like, well, don't worry, not like I'm driving. Like <laughs> yeah, so perfect. So that's the things we want to be talking about um, in a little list there. This is, from, this is actually from one of Ali's really um, <laughs> exciting tours that she did. If you want so. me to sleep, you just put the heat on. <laughs> <laughs> So we used to run tours out in Alice Springs where we watched every sunset, every sunrise. They hardly got, they were sleeping in swags under the stars. They crapped themselves, they hardly slept. And this was inside the bus pretty much the, the whole time. So as we're saying, we wanna try and make our chats exciting. <laughs> Otherwise we get that. All right, so we are coming up to the end of our first session. Are there any questions for now? All right, so I am gonna stick you guys in pairs just to have a little go at a, like a welcome speech. So I don't know if you wanna write, you do have them on your little handouts here. Oh, okay. All there ready to go. Um, so what we'll do, if I'll get Jenna and Steve, you can run off into the other room and have a little go so we're not all talking over each other. Mm -hmm. And Rob and Linda, if you don't mind staying here and having a little go. And that'll bring us up to the end of our first session. All right, off you go then. You guys can stay here. Oh, so where are we, where are we going? You're staying right there, Linda. Don't move a muscle. We're just gonna role play. It's a bit of a role play, mate. You can be the bus driver first. Rob, and we're just having a go, Linda. We, doesn't matter if it's good or bad, I, we couldn't care less, but when the words are coming out of your mouth, it just gives you a chance to practice. You've got your little ideas that you can look at right here of things you might want to talk about. But Rob's done this before, he's going to have a go first. Linda, it's time to uh, get the show on the road, but before we do, I've got to uh, issue a bit of information. The first thing's a warning. Yeah. Um, the warning is, I'm about to tell a joke. That's the warning, all right? All my jokes come with warnings. It's true, not because they're rude. I'm not allowed to tell the rude jokes anymore. Um, no, it's, my jokes come with warnings because some of them, this must be a later one's warning, some of them are so funny, the people have laughed that hard, they've fallen out of tears, done themselves an injury. So we have these little devices that they've put in the seats now. <laughs> They're called LRIPT. L-R-I-P-D, LRIPT. Laughter-related injury prevention devices. They were put here specifically for my jokes and the protection of your bodily self. So if you can just get the LRIPT, put it on, and then you're braced and ready for the joke. So, I'll, I'll get through the other information, but I know you came for the joke, but we'll get there. But once you've got your seatbelts on, you just need to familiarise yourself with where you need to go if in the event of an accident happens. And basically, because of the bus that we're in today, it's pretty easy. It's the door you came in, hopefully that'll open, and that's the door you can get out. We do have emergency exit windows, we do have some little hammers, you can tap the windows to break out, and 
if we do have an emergency, I'm going to stay calm and tell you all about what we're going to do to get out of here safely. Uh, so just listen to me and we'll be fine. Uh, the joke that I'm going to tell you too, by the way, it's not the best joke in the world, so don't build yourself up. But I've got it in the top five at the moment. It's, it's going to be good. You wait for it. Uh, food, drink on the bus, if you wouldn't mind, just not uh, consuming or um, making a mess on the bus because uh, otherwise we're going to spend another five minutes cleaning it up and then I'll probably think bad things about you at the end. You don't want me to think badly about you. Um, all I want to do is have nice pleasant thoughts about you. Uh, we've got water, if you've got water in the bottles, drink that, that's fine. If the temperature on the bus is uncomfortable, let me know. Don't be afraid. Tell me, tell me what you like, what's your favourite temperature. Uh, Lily, the joke that I'm going to tell too, by the way, Guinness World Book of Records, longest build-up. Great joke, really good. Uh, first aid, we've got first aid kit on board. Now, Linda, in a dietary appliance. No, you find nuts. Hey, no, love nuts. <laughs> love nuts. Who doesn't love nuts? Uh, legumes. <laughs> Like the same oh, thing. Oh, beautiful. Um, now, any mobility problems as well if you need to. If you need any assistance, I'm here to help. Tell me, and I'll get you some help. Uh, we are going to be uh, relying on you to um, just every now and then be, be diligent enough to get off. I might listen to what Rob's going to tell me in a second because it sounds like he's going to give me some important information and that might be about some timings of our trips today and our itinerary. And every now and then I'll just emphasise that this is something we need to keep in the noodle. Something that we've really got to focus on. Because I think 75% or uh, 30% of what you hear in a presentation is the only 30% that you all have to remember and the other 70% just go straight out the window. So every now and then I'm going to say, this is for your 30%. This is going to be important. This is the one thing. The other fluff I was talking about, the joke, you can forget that once I tell it, but that goes to the 70%. The 30% stuff is the timing. So I'm going to tell you some timings today. They're important so that we all have a tip-top day. And especially, uh, runs a few things on time that are very time dependent. So that's the 30%. And I say, yeah. here we go, here's the 30%. That's correct. Uh, we'll have ample opportunities to go to the toilet today, but if you have a very good bladder, we won't have ample opportunities to go to the toilet today. So we encourage you to practice your strikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we'll get there. It's, it's, really good and it's good for you apparently. Great, great physical attitude. Any questions you have, feel free to ask me. Um, I might know any question that you do have. Uh, it depends on the question and how I answer it, whether or not uh, you deserve the correct answer or my joke answer. And that's nearly here, that joke. I'm still going to have to trust me, you're making sure the hell room's on. Yeah, uh, so, before we get going, before we get into the joke, just one more reminder that we are going to follow an itinerary today. Uh, we are going to have fun today. We are going to love this adventure. Now, let's get going, let's get cracking in the joke. This is the joke. And then we can go, all right? Yeah, exactly. You might want to get your phone out and film it. <laughs> Pretty good. You ready? Good you joke. You need the box. You need the box. Okay, good. Yeah, I just didn't want you to think that, oh, no, it's not going to be worth it. It's not going to tell it, Why don't tuna fish like swimming north past Townsville? Because if they do, they'll end up in cans. <laughs> oh, you're a beauty. Thanks so much, guys. Come back in. Well, I can't do that, but I'll. We'll write, Linda. We'll get to you.
We'll, uh, we're up to the end of this session. We'll get to your one. No problem afterwards. <laughs> um, not all of that because I, I don't go to Cape Trib or that, but people get that and Sky Rail and all sorts of things, yes. Yeah. Mate, that was excellent. Thank you so much, guys, for doing that. Um, Matt, like, that was beautiful, Rob. The way you, like, you're going to listen because you're waiting for the joke at the end and you just keep listening, keep listening because you want to hear the joke. That is so good. I love that. All right, so you guys have had your practice activity. So in conclusion for this session, um, as I say, it's easy. What would you like in a tour guide? Just do that. All right, our safety speech, we need to cover it um, legally. But yes, if we can make it fun, you beauty. And in our next session, we're gonna be doing group cohesion and um, some games you can play and the ways you can get your groups mixing. So that's all for this session, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Thank you Joe. <laughs>